this is some of that Wyoming quartzite that I've been napping a lot lately. I was gonna do some hammerstone work. Um, this is a, what is that, like a degraded granite or something? This was in the creek where I got the quartzite, this black rock. It tended to break, but it was a pretty good hardness for this. And I like to save a few hammerstones that I use when I'm out in a stream. I don't, don't usually bring, sometimes I'll bring hammerstones with me, but most of the time I don't. Well, actually, a lot of times I have stand, hammerstones on standby, and if I can find anything usable while I'm not collecting rock, I like to do that. That way it makes more sense that, you know, if you can use the stones from the source, it's probably what that they were using, so I like to follow suit. And I cut my thumb slicing peppers a few days ago, so I'm going to put the glove on. It's a little tender still. I did it with a dull steel knife, not flint. So let's try to get a few flakes off this and make a bye face. This hammerstone might kind of flake apart, and then I'll, I'll try to look for another one. This stuff has seams throughout it. I think that's the end of that one. This is a good angle, but this cortex is going to make it not want to release. This is a good angle, but I prefer to get a flake from here first than right there. A high margin strike here, that flake is going to split and break and be really wide. I don't have a great opportunity to get in here. Maybe what I'll do is... I think I'm going to make a hell gap out of this. So... I've got plenty of width. Let's turn this edge down kind of steep and try to get up in here. That'll make something. That's a nice flat flake. Take this cortex off again. We're going to lose just a little bit off that bottom and sort of plane from this side, even though it tapers up because it's a big, what they call a turtle back. I think we can get one flat flick here. Like sometimes these hammerstones. If I bring, if you don't kind of check the the stream for what available hammerstones there are, they don't they don't seem obvious at all. Just looking at this, I would have thought that this was a harder rock, and it's layery, but it's got a good consistency to it. And I did bring an eight pound soft steel hammer to, to break a couple that were just gigantic. Sometimes you have a, only have a couple hours at a source and you've, you don't have a team of three helpers and a 30 pound hammer stone. Just kind of get the big one started with a 
a metal. I'm not above that at all. Speaking of which, lately I've been thinking about a lot of the people that I help that are, they started off napping with copper and then they want to switch to using hammer stones and antlers and stuff. Um, I see some of the same reoccurring issues due to mostly learning carborundum abrading and copper pressure and copper percussion and and giving advice and talking to people so many of these things same come up same things come up that when I talk about copper in some of my videos that I come off as maybe with like a negative connotation and it's just because there's so many things that that I see that are um, issues for people learning so it's a sense of small frustration for me because it's, it's it happens so much and so maybe I thought lately what I could do is some copper napping and show the difference in platforms like show what what I can do with the copper and then show you know how I'm going to modify that or, or treat my edges differently in order to to get away from that to maybe help copper nappers transition and it's it's one of those things where it's not, you know, I don't want to make judgments about it, but I don't know what you guys would think about that. It'll probably be, I guess, helpful. But I also don't want to be smug. Like, I, I could sit down with Copper having napped a few years. You know, it's not because I've been napping over 30 years that I could do that. I could have been napping three years. I'd struggled so much with the, the antlers early on when I was pretty young and not strong making big thin bifaces with the antler so it just I struggled through the initial learning with that to where the copper is just gonna it's just so much easier to remove flakes so I don't want to also make it seem like you know anyhow I don't know I don't know what I'm saying but that I think that would be helpful if you guys agree maybe let me know sort of distracted myself here This edge of it's a little grainy. Mm, that'll be a nice flake. So as we work up, we'll have to come back around the bottom, but find a good spot on this hammer stone. Get one right there, and I can, this flake might split. That wasn't deep enough. Trimming this down so I can come back. I'm not trying to convert everybody in the world to not napping with copper. I just know that there's so many people when they they, they got into it, they got into artifact hunting or old artifacts and then they start napping with copper, get proficient and they decide, man, I'm gonna try this. And they, their habits get so ingrained with the napping with the copper that it becomes very difficult. And so, you know, when they're napping advances the part where they're like trying to make stuff, their stuff look older or whatever, they struggle, so. This is the stage where I could proceed with the hammerstone, but it's gonna be, I've got the strategic flakes off it that I need, and it's so manageable right now with the, the punch or the small hammerstone I'm gonna stop. Sometimes it's hard to differentiate between cores, uh, tools, and preforms. That could look like an ads preform. This is going to be a nice piece. This stuff is unpredictable. Sometimes it'll have random seams that pop up in it. Okay, 